Hello and welcome to this week's Women's Football Chat. My name is Chris Gadsby. I'm here every Thursday at 6pm bringing you the very latest from the third and fourth tiers of women's football here in England. That's the FA Women's National League. Now, a few bits and pieces to go through this week. We are now in August, so the kickoff for the FA Women's National League is this month. Um, not that you'd know it from the promotion they've been doing, but uh, we'll get on to that later. Um, so yes, this is now the uh, the 3rd of August, so we only have uh, kind of one more kind of summer week, so to speak, before we start looking ahead now to the uh, kickoff in two and a half weeks' time. So next week will be uh, kind of this last kind of summer roundup week, and then the week after that on the 17th, uh, we'll be uh, back into the new season, looking ahead to the opening day. Um, but yes, a few bits of news um, to uh, go through and that exciting announcement that I uh, teased on my social media yesterday. We're going to start, though, with a couple of ground moves. Um, so we're going to start in the Northern Premier Division with West Bromwich Albion, who have... Uh, Confirmed that they have changed uh, venue. They're playing now at Redditch United's Valley Stadium for the upcoming uh, campaign. Uh, and they are at home on the opening day of the season. Uh, sorry, of the season. And uh, they have also announced their ticket prices at being £5 for adults and £1 for under 17. So a new venue uh, for West Bromwich Albion and also in Division 1 Midlands, a new venue for Northampton Town uh, who have reached an agreement with Fernie Fields Sports Club, which is the home of Northampton Salby Rangers. Uh, and that will see Northampton Town women's uh, first team play next season's fixtures at Fernie Fields Sports Ground. Uh, which, uh, judging by the pictures, is kind of standard for the league sort of, uh, you know, pitch with standing most of the way around and a, and a small stand on uh, on halfway on one side. So a couple of ground moves there just to keep uh, make you aware of in case uh, you're going to either of those teams towards the start of next season. Don't want to turn up to the wrong place. Um, right, moving on from uh, both of those. Uh, we have had confirmation out of the FA handbook um, that it is definitely two up and two down from tier three into tier two next season. So out of the FA handbook promotion and relegation provisions, uh, as set out below, each club finishing in 11th place and below in tier two, the women's championship will be relegated to the appropriate division in Tier 3 by reference to that club's geographical location. Makes complete sense, exactly what you would expect there. Um, you know, If the team in the North gets relegated, they'll go into, division, uh, into the Northern Premier Division. If the team from the South gets relegated, they go into the Southern Premier Division. Of course, it might mean that we end up with some lateral movement. We'll see. Uh, we won't know that until this time next year. Uh, subject to the relevant clubs demonstrating compliance with the Tier 2 promotion requirements, the clubs finishing in first place in each of the two Tier 3 divisions shall be promoted to Tier 2 in place of the clubs relegated from Tier 2 to Tier 3, i.e. rather than having the playoff that we have been having, each of the winners of the Northern and Southern Premier Division will be promoted to the Championship if they meet all the licence requirements in terms of ground regulations, capacity, um, I guess parking, all that sort of stuff is is kind of in there as well. Not au fait on the Championship licence requirements being a uh, Women's National League uh, show. In the event that a club finishing in first place in a division at Tier 3 does not wish to be considered for promotion or is not able to demonstrate compliance with the Tier 2 promotion requirements, promotion shall be offered to the club finishing in the second place of the same Tier 3 division, subject to being able to demonstrate compliance with the promotion requirements. In the event that the clubs finishing in first and second place of a Tier 3 division do not wish to be considered for promotion and or are not eligible uh, with the requirements, the club finishing in 11th place in Tier 2 shall remain in Tier 2 and shall not be relegated. 
If this occurs in both divisions at Tier 3, no club shall be relegated from Tier 2. Compliance with the Tier 2 promotion requirements shall be determined by the FA Women's Super League and FA Women's Championship Board at its absolute discretion. So, essentially what it's saying there is if you win the Northern and Southern Premier Division, you'll get promoted into the Championship so long as you can show you meet the uh, requirements. If you can't, then you won't go up. Uh, I think that's the second half of that is something that they obviously have to put into the handbook but isn't going to happen. I think with the amount of work that the likes of Newcastle and Portsmouth going semi-professional, uh, you know, to go along with the teams, Forest going with this professional hybrid model, the work that's going in with Tier 3 clubs that you would expect to be up towards the top of Tier 3 next season, they're going to meet the licence requirements for the Championship. It's not a case of oh, uh, they've won Tier 3, but they aren't actually going to be able to go up because they don't meet the requirements. I think it's a fairly safe assertion that the teams who are going to be contesting the titles in Tier 3 meet the requirements for Tier 2. Um, so essentially, those all those paragraphs I've just written, you can cut, uh, sorry, read out, you can kind of boil down to, if you win, you're going up. Because if you win the league, chances are you, you're going to meet the licence requirements. Um, so yes, two up, two down, confirmed. Um, at least it gives uh, you know, proper cause for celebration when you win the league rather than uh, winning the league and then just missing out on the, uh, on the final day uh, in that promotion and then having to do it all again next year, which is the case for Forest this time around. Um, Right, a couple more things uh, to go through. I knew this was going to be a short week because not a lot has been happening or going on. And that's really what I want to talk about next. The league, as I have just said, kicks off in two and a half weeks. Specifically, it starts in 17 days. And there has been very little, almost nil, from the FA Women's National League to make a point about the fact that it starts in 17 days. Um, since the end of last season, the FAWNL has tweeted 18 times. Uh, and so I'll go kind of roughly from in chronological order. Uh, we had playoff final video about a week after the playoff final. Fine, nothing wrong with that. Two behind the balls. Uh, videos, nothing wrong with that. Or if you do go on the FA Women's National League YouTube page, you see that those videos are kind of tailing off a bit in terms of views. Uh, one about Eid, again, nothing wrong with that. One about the makeup of the leagues this season, i.e. when they put out all the um, the graphics that showed who was in what league. Again, kind of nothing wrong with that. Uh, a video from the awards night, not really a problem with it, but... Why did it take them seven weeks to make it? Uh, and then we've got eight tweets about the opening day fixtures and fixtures as a whole for the first teams. Now, this was one on the Friday saying they'll be released at midday on Monday. And then six on midday on Monday saying these are the opening day fixtures, unless you're Queen's Park Rangers, in which case it's not. Um, and then one later on that day saying all of the fixtures are on full time. Fine, nothing wrong with that. Two about the new balls. Uh, I've made my feelings about the ball known last uh, week show. One about the new numbers and the letter design for the back of the shirts. Again, nothing wrong with it, but they could have done so much more with that. Uh, and one about the reserve fixtures that says uh, reserve fixtures are, and it's, in fact, it's the last tweet they did, which was on the 31st, so on Monday. 23-24 fixtures for the reserve section will be released at noon today. Keep eyes peeled for updates. That was the last update from the league. Um, so there has been nothing since the end of last season about... Like a countdown as to when the league actually started. Like last season, they counted down from eight weeks to go. 
There's been nothing about the World Cup, no, you know, no support for um, like the Lionesses, anything like that. Which I, I I know that obviously like Cardiff are in Wales, but um, so you know, in the last eleven weeks, there's been eighteen tweets, and eight of them were in a kind of three four day span when the fixtures came out. Um, so I'm kind of just wondering when are the league going to promote themselves is is kind of what I'm asking. And if you go on the FAWNL um, Twitter page, the link on that to the website takes you to womenscompetitions.thefa.com because uh, a lot of it is kind of not dictated, so to speak, from, from the FA, but you know, the league have less control than they would perhaps like. This is where another one of my issues stems from, because if you go on the women's competitions dot uh, and go on the league tables ready for next season, um, there are numerous mistakes on the uh, on the league tables and they haven't even started yet. Um, so Northern Premier uh, Division and feel free to have a look at these along with uh, along with me is that um, first place at the minute is filed. No issue with that. AFC filed first, apart from the fact that it doesn't have the AFC in front of filed. Um, so it makes it look like they're just out of order. Um, they've got Halifax in the right place in the league alphabetically, but they still have them down as Brighouse Town and with Brighouse Town's logo. Uh, so that's another one into the southern premier division a similar situation they've still got gillingham with gillingham's uh logo uh and then portsmouth are the only team that have fc on the end and rugby they haven't got their logo on at all yet into division one midlands league town's logo is only in black and white which i find somewhat strange uh notts county don't have a logo yet. Peterborough United's name is all in caps. Really get that either. Uh, and Sutton Coalfield Town are um, don't have a logo yet. They're a new team, can kind of understand it. Some of the teams have hyperlinks to the website on them as well, but some of them are broken. Uh, in 2 Division 1 North, uh, Chester Street Town are in and fine. FC United of Manchester don't have a logo yet. Uh, but other than that, North is pretty good, uh, apart from Middlesbrough's logo is also wrong uh, because Middlesbrough have now obviously changed into integrated with Middlesbrough men, so the badge has changed as well. Uh, Division 1 South East, AFC Sudbury, no logo, um, but again, new team. Ashford Town, wrong logo. Uh, Cambridge United, no logo. Haywards Heath Town, they've changed the name, but... Uh, there isn't a logo for it again Queen's Park Rangers for some reason all in capitals and Worthing uh, no logo and then into Division 1 South West which is the worst of all and I'm going to go from bottom to top so that the worst is at the end Torquay United no logo can kind of understand it new team uh, Swindon Town FC Women's First is what Swindon Town are down as and they have no logo uh, Southampton Women's FC get the FC on the end of it, but they've got no logo. Uh, Porter Z Town, for some reason, is all in capitals. Uh, Abingdon United, no um, no logo. Again, new team, okay. Uh, and then AFC Bournemouth, and they have misspelt Bournemouth. Uh, B O U R N M O U T H. And Bournemouth has an E in it. And I should know that because my aunt lives there. But Bournemouth has an E in the name. And on the FA website, Bournemouth does not have an E in the name. Now, on the um, on full time, so the actual leagues um, bit, uh, Bournemouth do have... Uh, any in the name you will be pleased to know 
But my point is, is that if you go on the league, you are directed to the FA website, not full time. And in doing that, you are being introduced to, and I've just counted there as I've been going through it, 26, I make it, errors and inconsistencies on the uh, on the website. And then if you go to the fixtures and results, and again, I mean, this is wrong on full time as well, and it's changing all of the all of the time. But see, so some of the stadiums are wrong because of um, you know they've still got, for example, Forest playing at the Halbrook Stadium, and now they've moved to Grange Park. But it just so I'm just wondering kind of when the league are going to promote themselves and how the league can kind of progress really, because it just strikes me as inviting themselves to not get kind of people through the gates as much as they would like, because you go to the league and you go, where's you end up being directed to the FA and there are so many errors in it. So, I don't know, we'll have to see uh, if anything over the next couple of weeks promotes the league uh, better. But they really do need a dedicated social media person, the league do. They really, really do. Um, Right, one more thing to discuss then on this week's Women's Football Chat. And it's an exciting one. It is um, Fantasy Football, F-A-W-N-L Fantasy Football is now live. Uh, players are being added to the databases all the time, but fantasy football is live as of right now. You can join the leagues right now and start putting your squads together. There are about 120 players so far per uh, per league um, because we are still waiting for some squads to register players and some squads to tell us where people play on their websites and things like that so they can get added in. But you are now able to sign up and register for fantasy football. And I'm delighted to say as well um, that uh, to launch fantasy football, I have partnered with Since 71. Uh, and they are going to be doing kind of the write up side of things uh, for uh, fantasy football. I'm going to be doing the, the front end stuff, so the uh, the Google Sheets that I've created, collecting all the stats, doing the leaderboards, that sort of thing. And since 71, we'll be writing, uh, writing about it. Um, so, yes, so since 71, they've got uh, an article coming out as well, but I'll read you a bit uh, from it. So uh, their side of things is that... Uh, they're partnering up with me to promote the competition with monthly updates on the Since 71 website, along with a few special features. Uh, and also, they are throwing in a special prize at the end of the season, but more is shared about that in the near future. So, if you join up and play fantasy football next season, you could be in for that Since 71 special prize. So uh, if you were umming and ahhing about signing up, then uh, yeah, sign up to uh, to Since 71 and uh, take part in fantasy football next uh, season. Hopefully it will bring uh, even more interest to uh, the FA WNL. And of course, if uh, fantasy football, I hope it is your thing, so I spent many, many hours collating all of this in order to get it ready. If that's not your thing, but you still want to get involved, then we do have the Predictor League uh is up as well for each of the uh, divisions so if you think you know which way the uh, games are going to go then get involved with the women's football chat predictor league next season but the big news fantasy football is now live if you want to get involved you can either send me a dm on twitter and what i need is the league or leagues you can do multiple if you want that you want to get involved with the name of your team and your email address so I can invite you to the Google Sheet. So I need those three things. You can either do that with a DM on Twitter or use the contact page on my website, www.womensfootballchat.wordpress.com. 
gmail.com. So fantasy football live and kicking. Keep checking back regularly because I will be um, adding to the database on a regular basis. But that will do it for this week's women's football chat. Thank you very much for watching and or listening. I'm going to say it once again, get involved with Predictor League or the fantasy football because you might get that special prize. Be back next week. Hopefully there will be a bit more promotion from the league and hopefully the Lionesses will still be in the Women's World Cup. It is now. It's creeping up on us. Just two and a half weeks away. We'll be back next Thursday at 6pm. But for now, goodbye. Goodbye.